What's up and welcome to... What's up and welcome to Idol Insights, a show where each week I and Trevor Best talk to interesting people about D&D and Idol champions. And with me this week is the one who makes me laugh a bunch while working, V-Muse. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? To. How's it going? It's Thursday. Did you know that? It is Thursday. I, I had been aware of that a few times. It still doesn't quite uh, make no. sense to me, but here it is. <laughs> uh, but, I'm here for it. But V, thank you so much for for joining and uh, and talking with me today about Voronika coming to the game, who uh, I I don't think a lot of people saw uh, uh, coming, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh, First, I'm going to start things Mm -hmm. out the way that I like to do on on this show, which is V, how'd you get into D&D? What's D&D? Oh, well, I mean, okay, next question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, that is a lovely meandering wandering path because i have always been a bookworm as a child however a roman catholic bookworm who went to catholic school so <laughs> anything D D, I did not know was D D until i got to college um, okay so it's like i was reading books that were influenced by lore of D D and things like that but i didn't realize oh. it i didn't know it I was just grabbing, oh my gosh, this is a really good book about fairies. And oh my gosh, this Mm -hmm. is a really cool fantasy world book. Um, And so I got pulled into uh, lore and mythology and everything like that. I became an English major, which again, perpetuated more of the learning, all this other stuff that if it wasn't D&D exactly, it was stuff when I started playing D&D, I realized that was a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, The first thing that pulled me into D&D officially was Baldur's Gate on PlayStation 2. Hey, Ah, I know that game. That game was fun as heck. Yep. I'm playing that on my Switch right now, actually. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Uh, So it's actually, that was kind of ironic. Uh, Officially, it was a video game that got me into it. Now, hey, ha. Um, Hmm. I'll figure. So it was from there, and then it was eventually um, going down the primrose path of why don't you play it, and then playing it, you know, at the table, and then from the table, it's like, oh, you can put things on the table, and then so on and so on, and it just kept going. Mm-hmm. Is really what got me pulled into D anD. d That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I love. I love that. Yeah, no, that <laughs> that uh that Baldur's Gate game, uh, Dark Alliance on PS2, is so much fun. Oh, so much dang yeah. fun. I was playing it. Uh, like I should pick that back up again. But what is time? I was like playing it like four months ago, and I got to that spot where it's like you're jumping, and the dang things like yeah, drop it's out the thieves' my- guild. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Thank you. I forgot how frustrating that was, and I am not good at the jumpings. So I, <laughs> ah, I, I, I've been pay- playing it off and on, and I just finished the snow mountain level, and Ooh, that's officially that the one. furthest I've ever been in that game because like yeah. my friend and I tried to play co-op of it uh, back in the day, and we were terrible at that game we were so bad we're just like oh yeah we'll just walk out in front of all the goblin archers and we'll be fine and no they were dead they were dead a lot (laughs) lot you were you were were fodder Uh yeah i did did complete it like you know so many decades ago um but now it's like now i'm back to i'm like oh i gotta remember how all this happens and how it works and what the tricks were again because Yeah, I, I was smart this time, though. I, I decided not to be like, I always play magic users and I will get good at that. I just I, I know I'm not good at that. I just played the dwarf and I beat the crap out of everything. Oh, and it's yeah, great. The, dwarf <laughs> yeah, the dwarf is fun, though. I agree. <laughs> um, well, it's probably a good time to mention that. Hey, uh, by the way, we're live. Uh, so if you have any questions for V, uh, you could put question colon and then your question into the chat. And our awesome mod Martin will grab them, put into a text doc. And also uh, uh, keep keep your ears perked because we might be doing a giveaway at some point during the show that I will interject at some point in the future. Uh, <laughs> but uh, V, Vornica. Yes. Um, I, I, I feel like we have to give a, a big spoiler warning here at the beginning of this. Yes. Uh, we are going to be talking about spoilers for, uh, uh, the, the black dice society. And so if, if you haven't, uh, watched or listened to that yet, and you want to stay spoiler free, this might not be the best episode for you to, to watch. You can come back and watch it later. We're going to have it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So you go watch, get all the story and everything and you come back. Check this out, um, but uh, but yeah. So Vor- Voronika, uh, I I think I want to start off with how did how did she come about being made? Oh, okay. So it was one of those things where B Dave reached out to me and explained that he was getting a game pulled together for Wizards, and that he had a very specific concept he wanted to explore, but it was one of those things where he needed the right person to be able to pull it off. Um, because we knew going into it, 
we were going to have this, you know, sweet, adorable, well-loved character with a kick to it uh, <laughs> type of situation. That's a way to put so, it. So, <laughs> yeah. So he needed someone who could do both a, you know, this, you know, tra-la-la druid in the beginning, but then also, spoiler, hi, um, <laughs> Dark Lord, <laughs> after the fact. Um, so it was one of those things where he approached me about it and he says, you know, general concept, it's going to be... A, Again, spoiler, it's going to be a bride who gets killed, you know, on her wedding night. And then all these things are going to, you know, go down what they are exactly not sure what they were. Uh, but we knew that the end game was going to be basically creating a new dark lord and a new domain. Um, so that's sort of what got it started. And I was like, OK, yeah, sure. I think I'm comfortable jumping into this and everything like that. He goes, OK, well, then how do you feel about playing with Mark Mir and Jason Carl as Aslan and Strahd respectively? Like, cool. Okay, yeah, sounds yeah. great. He goes, okay, how about a meeting with Chris Perkins to make sure he's okay with your concepts? <laughs> oh, I did not know about that. Yeah, yeah. I had to sit down with um all the guys and Chris, and it was basically we were presenting to Chris what we wanted to do with Black Dice Society and be like, and so we're going to have this new domain, and I had to present what Koshmore was going to be to Chris as well as the concept of Oronika, Um, because this was before the book came out and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure we were aligning with, you know, the tone and everything that was going to be happening. And so by the time of the end of the meeting, Chris was like, yep, go for it. Sounds good. Um, That's so, so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> you got the, you got the official thumbs up. Mm -hmm. That is so yeah. freaking cool. Yeah. So once, once I got that, I then sat down and I started creating Nika and her lore and her backstory and um, Koshmar, both as, you know, Koshmar in the Munshe Isle and Koshmar as a dread domain. So so what so, were some yeah. of the inspirations for you for for Nika and the the domain? Um a lot of it was dualities. Um and I actually my major it was uh English literature with a Victorian Gothic <gasps> focus. <laughs> oh my god, that's so, so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um so actually I tapped into a few of the novels that I had fallen in love with um especially The Lady in White. And there's a lot of light and dark dualities that are played out in that novel. So I was like, okay, I want to kind of do something with that, but it's going to be embodied in the same person. So uh, you even see it in what I've done with her costuming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when she's a bride, she is this light and fluffy and pastel person, you know, rosy cheeks and vibrant hair and everything like that. And then when she becomes dark Lord form, it is dark. It is menacing, menacing, it is sinister and everything like that. So I was playing with that and I am extremely visual too. Um, and I knew I wanted to make her a druid because mm -hmm. it was just like, okay, this has got to be a druid character because it's something different, a different take on what sort of a dark lord would be a dark lord would be based in, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I'm like, we'll start off druid. I'm like, okay, nature. Nature is fantastic because everyone thinks, oh, druids, you know, life and nurture. Yeah. And da, 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 da. I'm like, no, because there's also that duality with nature. Like, yes, there's life, but there's also death. And that is an actually a very strong part of nature and the cycle and everything as well. Um, so playing off of that is really what helped me start creating, um, Koshmar, this beautiful, vibrant, floral place and Koshmar, this decrepit, blighted, uh, withering place and, you know, overlaying the two on each other. As someone who loved Silent Hill games, I love the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, the, the whole thing with, um, circles, when I was going through, I'm like, yeah, I could do this and that, 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 that. But then I saw Circle of Dreams. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Mm. Dreams can be very interesting things. Dreams can be beautiful and wonderful, but dreams can be nightmarish. So that also tapped into, okay, Nika was going to be Circle of Dreams, but upon becoming a Dark Lord, it was going to be nightmares. Um, so everything in Koshmar, when you look at it, there's a nightmarish connection to it as a dread domain. Uh, little mm. things like the bird that was just described a couple episodes ago. Yeah, it was a cute little bourbon in a tree, but it stood up and it had six legs. Um, yeah, yeah. Little things like that. Art so Audio's artwork little... of that was <laughs> yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah. so I, I've put in these little twists of things where it's like, oh, well, you walk up to this tree and you think it is just this tree with these various branches and you realize, no, it's a tree, but the branches are actually skeletal forms that have kind of merged and bonded into the tree itself. And, God, so cool. you know, what Spanish moths, moss is actually, you know, death shrouds and things like that. So. That is so freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, and you're talking about the the circle of dreams and and that there can be nightmares, and and I believe that it like your 
yours is categorized as the circle of nightmares. Was there any change that you did to dreams or was it just a, a name flavor? Uh, flavoring things slightly differently um, with naming and everything like that. And then in terms of her spells, I focused them more on destructive poison, uh, necrotic damage, things like that is more the steering focus I will use for her uh, when I sit down and, you know, well, what attacks would she do or not attacks? What spells would she use? And, you know, what would happen in the lair and everything like that. So that was really more the driving force for me. It's like, okay, it's still keeping it to the dream qualities, mm -hmm. but how would they be nightmarish in presentation? Yeah. Is how Okay. Would I, yeah. I that, that's one of my I, I love doing that sort of stuff in game of like yeah. just taking something that is in the rules okay it works mechanically it's been play tested and mm -hmm. everything but I'm going to describe it differently yeah but it still works the same way I, I yeah. always love doing stuff yeah. like that yeah exactly exactly and she's got like fun little twists in there because um you know she's she's still got these elements of her ghost form that have yeah. sort of been bonded into her as a dark lord so she still has her horrifying i like to say visage because it's fancy um, <laughs> but she still has that going for her too even though you know she's a dark lord um but yeah it's been an incredible character to take from a little pinpoint of topic and build her into what she is now absolutely that is so cool yeah. um and uh and yeah she she's had quite the character arc uh through the show um yeah. Well, uh, before I get to a question about that, why, why did you d for catch people up? You know, they, they they've watched it, they've seen it, maybe they don't quite remember mm -hmm. everything. What what has been Nika's progression from the first episode to uh, we'll say the big reveal? Okay, so Nika started off uh, on her wedding day marrying the brother of who is actually her true love, Desmond, um, because Desmond chose to leave Koshmar and leave the responsibilities of king to his younger brother Armand. Um, so Nika was getting married to Armand that night and things went down where basically Nika got killed. Okay. The Dark Lords kind of jumped in and did some things. We had a little <laughs> mix of Soth and Aslan and Strahd and a little dash of Zabilna, it turns out. <laughs> um, and that was basically her demise, uh, the very first episode. And from that, because Strahd had an inkling, thank you, Aslan, um, that Nika might actually be Tatiana, not blue Tatiana, but Tatiana in Curse of Strahd. Um, so Strahd took it upon himself to sort of take Voronika's soul and place it in Mordant to preserve her type of thing. Um, so that's where Strahd kind of came into play with this one and the whole connection there. Um, so Nika kind of hung out in Mordant, got to know um, Van Richten and his son, by the way, Erasmus. Uh, so hanging out with those guys, and although one didn't know the other was there. Um, so she was in there for a while, and then it was as the party was moving through, they were trying to figure out a way to save Nika. And they finally were directed to Mordant, where they found her and imbued her into Desmond's sword. With, is it Merryweather? The Mayweathers? I am blanking on those lovely oh. sisters' last name right now. Something. Far, the, the, oh, I cannot remember either. I, That's bugging me. Like, yeah, it's gonna that's gonna irk me as well. But anyways, yeah. they helped them um imbue Nika into Desmond's sword so that Mayweather Foxglove. Somebody put it Mayweather in chat. Mayweather Foxglove. Thank you. Thank you. Fox thank you. Grove. Thank you. There we go. Foxglove so is another thing. Yay! Well, I mean, Foxglove is the thing that Nika will use. Uh, <laughs> but um from that she was able to travel with them and sort of we treated it as it wasn't that it was a sentient sword, it was a sword was the vehicle for Nika. Um, so she could either talk to Desmond while still in the sword. She could jump out and make herself visible and interact with everyone. Um, and then from there, we ended up in uh, the Feywild, uh, uh, Wild Bill and the Witchlight. And there was this interaction with Zabilna. And there had been this whole side story of Aslan trying to find the crown of the Raven Queen, which Nika's family has had for ages. Um, so Nika knew very well where that dang crown was. Wasn't letting Aslan have that. Um, the crown let's see the we got the crown when we quickly hopped into koshmar and it's sort of in between as i like mm -hmm. to call it uh we grabbed the crown went into the feywild and there was this crucial point where zabilna was basically just like letting it all out I'm like i'm going to reveal this all to you let you know exactly what happened but oh by the way i have this fun thing where i can take your memories away from you which i did the first time i'm going to do it again and in the middle of zabilna's big old speech um <laughs> Nika was basically like Desmond give me the, give me the crown of the Raven Queen I kind of know what this thing can do um so using that crown she basically slammed it on 
Zabilna's head and took Zabilna's power and Prismir, sort of, in turn. Uh, so she created the fall of Prismir. And in doing that, you know, the dark powers are like, hey, this one's interesting. Let's give her a domain. <laughs> <laughs> and so Koshmar became a dread domain. Um, and now we're kind of exploring all of this uh, machinations between the various dark lords and their domains and, you know, the party traveling here, there and everywhere trying to, you know, figure this part out, figure that part out and all of that. And they every so often keep coming back to Koshmar with Voronika and they're trying to figure out, you know, are you with us? Are you against us? You keep helping us. What's going on here? And it, she's very much playing it very you know, cool, calm, and collected, and not really giving them much information. It, it's it's very much a. Are you with us? Yes, but also no. <laughs> but also yes. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I, I want to talk uh, a little bit about the the reveal because I remember mm. editing that audio and getting to that point and you know y'all played it so well at the beginning but it was just like oh these fun. these cameras not working it's just mm -hmm. gonna be off for this one don't worry about it and so I, I i heard this and i'm like okay and then it gets to the the part with the reveal and i hear everyone gasp and i'm like well now i gotta go find the vod <laughs> <laughs> so while i'm editing it i pulled up the youtube vod and watched that part of it it's so dang cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such yeah, a good was, reveal. That was a lot of, and that again, we knew was happening before we even started playing the game. <laughs> so, and that that's that the, a long game to this. That is one of the things that absolutely like just completely messed with me because like I did I didn't know about that. And like B David mm -hmm. never once let that slip. No. And uh and the next time I talked to him, I'm just like, have you really been y'all really been playing that from the beginning? And he's just like, look at the artwork. And I went, what? Mm -hmm. And he just look at the art. And I have yeah. I've had it as my phone wallpaper mm -hmm. ever since the start of the show. Yeah. And I yeah. went, oh my God, Nika is yes. right next to Aslan and Strahd. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was that was purposeful composition. So good. <laughs> It was so good. I like that. That is honestly one of the best twists I've seen pulled in a uh, in an actual play, and and y'all did it magnificently. Yeah, it was so much fun to do, and I was dying. I was dying when that was happening. Like afterwards, I was like, "I'm so sorry to the <laughs> cast." Like I'm like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> uh, but I'm sure they loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been fun. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, what what uh what has that meant for black dice society uh, as far as like there being this uh, new dread lord and them working with her like that's not something that we really get to see a lot in games is people working with the dread lord because the dread lord's right. usually trying to murder everyone <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has, has yeah. I, actually I, I think a better way of asking this is while you're doing this has it has it at all felt like co-dming in a way or ha have you still felt like a player no, it's it's a co damning experience because what happens behind the scenes is um, B Dave and I will touch base uh, before I do my appearances and we'll run down and talk about, well, this is kind of how we want to do it. What do you think? We'll bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And then it comes time and he'll like, he'll shoot me like, you know, do what we talked about now and everything like that. So we work with each other more as co DMs. Um, and I know I'll it, basically, I kind of play Nika almost like an NPC of mine. Mm -hmm. um, because. Okay. I am still relaying, you know, what Koshmar is looking like, what's happening and everything like that. Um, I always and... thought that was interesting from from the very beginning that B. Dave yeah. would would turn to you as like, V, what does this look like? Yep. Yep. So it's it's always been that Koshmar. What's funny is we even have in the game, like there's a line, Koshmar is mine. I'm like, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, since Koshmar is mine, whenever we do stuff in Koshmar, he's like, okay, you take, you know, take the reins and go and do and everything like that. Let's just, you know chat about what we want to have done for the storyline itself is really what happens behind the scenes of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, th there's another thing that I do uh, with folks that I realized I didn't talk to you about beforehand, which is going a little bit through the items that your character is coming with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have it available, but w w can, can you run through any of the, the, the cool items that Nika has? 
One minute, please. I have to open up. I know. I'm the worst. I should have mentioned this before. I didn't even have it open. Yeah, but you also know how I work in terms of how organized I am. (laughs) That okay. Real quick for everyone out there in chat, V is the best person in the world with organization. I would be lost in my job if it were not for V, (laughs) especially with the show. (laughs) She's a wizard. Okay, so I, I can I can go through six of them right now. Okay. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so one of the ones is the Unassuming Reliquary, and that is the one that's sort of a tip to Aslan Rex, and it's basically this simple pine box, and that's the box that had the crown of the Raven Queen in there that he had been looking for, and he was like, hee hee, not telling. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure in her equipment that there was something for Strahd and something for Aslan. Um, so that's the Aslan nod of like, oh, no, 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 no. I know you're looking for this. You think you're playing me, but guess what? <laughs> uh, it's mine. <laughs> Uh, So that is one of the items that you will find uh, in her equipment. And then the failsafe cocktail. That was something that goes right back to the first episode, actually, because there is a scene with Nika and Desmond where she gives him the mead. Like, here's your favorite mead. It'll help you calm down and everything like that. What people weren't aware of, but I thought would be fun to sort of reveal in Idol Champions, it was laced with Wolfsbane to keep him calm. Oh because my Because she gosh. knows about his lycanthropy. Yeah. Um, so there's that in there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dark Lord's crown. That is like, a, that's the crown of the Raven Queen that has basically become Nika's crown. And it went from, you know, the Raven Queen's very notable looking crown mm-hmm. to one that's more uh, a mix of the darks and the twigs and various jet, like, you know, pearls and black pearls and everything on that one. Um, so that's obviously very significant to Nika is just having that crown because the crown is what gave her the source of power to create Kashmar, the dread domain uh, and overthrows Vilna and then throne of the dread domain. Uh, I had described a particular throne when Kashmar was first developing. So I thought it'd be great to have her throne involved because she has always wanted to be queen of Kashmar. Heck like yeah. that was, she was raised to be that literally her parents were raising her to be queen of Kashmar wife to the king of Kashmar. Um, so I'm like, we have to make sure there's a throne involved as well. That's a cool and I throne to too. Sure, yeah, that's just it. Like I wanted to make sure it had the aesthetic of it was like beautiful and sinister all at the same time. Uh, I remember telling the artists that one and they did a beautiful job capturing that one. I got to tell you, the artists have been amazing. Oh yeah. The visuals for this. I was like, you get it. You get Nika. You get Veronica. I am thrilled. Um, okay. And then the deadly Oleander. That is taps into the fact that when Nika was a druid and studying she was very much into tinctures and how various herbs worked not just for healing but also for poisoning um and white oleander is an extremely poisonous flower uh so that's something where I wanted to have a nod to that that she's always sort of had this darker side but it always looked very beautiful to the naked eye to people who aren't aware of like oh that flower is not good for you (laughs) uh which is why that's in there and then the uh rose by any other name it looks like it's a white rose that's sort of like tipped with red like some Mm -hmm. roses out there but that's actually blood on the petals um (laughs) so yeah it's it's sort of a nod to koshmar going through these various formations of beautiful and the in-between and the dread domain factor and everything like that so that's just some of the i love it the, those the, those are cool. I, I I can't get over the throne. The throne is so dang cool. The, the throne. I want the yeah. throne. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I want Next project. Tell him make me a throne, please. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a, a very. It. It'd be a very uh, extended paint and slay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we'll be good because it's supposed to be miniatures. That's definitely not miniatures. Mm, that's fair. <laughs> well, actually, I, I think that's a, a, a nice little segue over to miniature painting, uh, which is, uh, yeah, uh, something that you do here on the channel and something you do in your free time um, yes. and, and post just absolutely stunning things. And it's like, I think I'm going to work on this. And then two hours later, ah, look at this. <laughs> look what I can do. <laughs> so um, when, when, did, when did mini painting become a thing for you? Since always. Um, Mm -hmm. No, I've always been an artistic child. So I was always painting little things. I was doing like paper mache and clay sculptures and stuff like that and painting little things. Okay. Um, So really, it was when I realized that I keep, I had a very good excuse to keep painting little things as an adult. (laughs) I was like, yeah, I'm going to go back into that now. Thank you very much. Um, And that's what drew me back into doing miniature painting or figure painting 
uh, if you will. So yeah, it's always just been something I've loved doing. I've always had a um, draw to, you know, working with paints in various forms, whether it's on canvas, whether it's, you know, watercolors on paper type of thing. That's always been a part of me. So it's been very cool to be able to take all of that painting background and bring it into miniature painting, which is also why I love breaking all the rules of mini painting. <laughs> <laughs> And showing people like, no, you can you can literally paint it like this, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah. I I, I actually think that was the thing that really kind of finally clicked with me with mini paint because I tried it several times. My my friend tried to get me into Warhammer and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I sat and painted my army and and whatnot, and it never really clicked. And uh, then oh my, I don't even know how many years ago now. Uh, my sister in law was like, hey, you should give it a shot again, and mm -hmm. you know you don't have to listen to like all of the the rules of how to do mini paint because that's usually what I do where I go and I watch videos and I'm like, this is how you're yeah. supposed to do it. Um, and she's mm -hmm. like, just try something. She's like, here, take a bunch of paints and just try something. And I ended up with a mini that I didn't hate. Uh, and I was like, oh, this actually looks kind of good. I would put this yeah. on a table. Oh, wait, I would put this on a table. <gasps> yeah. I should do more of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's one of those things where art is such a personal expression and experience. When you get caught up, caught up in the, I should be doing this, that's where you lose your voice as an artist for what it is you're trying to do because you're caught up in what someone else's voice is telling you to do, which may not actually be your own personal style. So it's why I encourage, you know, experiment, play around, try things out. The very worst case scenario is you don't like that mini and how it came out. You could always either strip the mini down or buy the same exact mini and try again. Mm. That's literally your worst case scenario, which is yeah. not really a bad scenario when you think about it. I have 100% uh, so, yeah. done the rebuying the mini thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have too. I've done a bunch of different ones of the same thing, so... <laughs> my, my wife was just like, well, why don't you just like get the paint off of that one? I was like, no. That one's a reminder of what I've done. That's a lot, but it's, it's, it helps you remember like, well, didn't quite like that as much. Let me try this again. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah, exactly. What, what would you say is like your, your favorite thing that you have painted mini wise? My uh, Rascala from Warhog. What the what? what? It's um, I, I called her my Ophelia. If you go on my Instagram, you could probably find it fastest there. It's the, um, female figure who's in the water and she's got ironically because <gasps> going back to nika's key art doing this motion um loved painting that one because i got to do some water effects i got to do some flesh effects um and making it beautiful and creepy so yeah actually come to think about it i was probably bringing in a lot of nika into that figure <laughs> 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 because it was dark and sinister but beautiful at the same time so i really enjoyed painting that one and i have a few more from warhog that i want to get painted once i am um resettled and have mm -hmm. my paints back out again because they're they're ones there's two figures that i'm going to paint to look like nika as a ghost and nika as a dark lord oh very cool yeah. oh my gosh lauren even yeah. was able to find it thank you that is you you are so fast lauren oh oh yeah i remember yeah. i remember seeing this one yeah uh when you yeah. were posting it god this is gorgeous Here, yeah, i i'm actually gonna like, i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it into chat so people can see it mm. Share with the rest of the class, please. I think, wait, was that it? No, that wasn't it. Oh, shoot. That was the wrong thing. That was, that's a different thing. <laughs> that's the wrong thing. Don't do that one. Don't do um, folks. You're not going to get anything. Why did it do that? I copied and pasted it. Um, <laughs> hang on. Give me one second, chat. Um, trying to do nice things and everything's going wrong. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, so the, the, the mini painting aspect of it and everything, and I know you've talked about it on Paint and Slay, but you know, some folks out there may not have, uh, have watched it, which by the way, you should, it's on our YouTube channel and also, uh, every Friday at noon. <laughs> um, uh, what, what, what are some, what's some advice uh, for people who like maybe have been looking at minis and they've been thinking about doing it, but they just haven't yet, but what, what, what what's some advice for them? I'm going to tell you, don't get caught up in what if I make a mistake and y'all trying to join the Zoom call. We see you. Knock it off. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, it's one of those things. A lot of people get caught up in the um, how do I get started? What if I make a mistake? What if it doesn't come out as a picture in my head? You will make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to come out the way you thought in your head until you start doing it and you start trying it and you do it more and more and more because no one is perfect at all when they first get started in a hobby. That is something that you may have an artistic um, ability coming into it. You may not, 
but it is not something that is going to get better regardless, unless you try it out and get going and rinse, repeat and keep trying and learning and expanding with what you're doing. Um, it can look very intimidating. And I know so many people have said, I don't dare pick up a mini. I don't have an artistic bone in my body. And I have literally sat them down during a live stream, mind you, with people. <laughs> um, and they have ended up with a miniature. They're like, oh my gosh, I painted this. Look what I painted. I'm like, I know, it's a cool thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just have confidence in yourself. Trust the process of learning, but also be ready for the fact that there's going to be things you're going to learn and change and do along the way. And that's totally okay too. Yeah. No one is going to be like, uh, this, you know, is not pristine. It was your first minute <laughs> type of situation. And if they are like that, kick that turtle out of your boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely think it's, it's something very similar to like, uh, writing, uh, that I found with advice of just like learn the rules, but learn the rules to, to break them. Like, like mm -hmm. know the, what's out there, uh, but yeah. don't feel like you have to do that every single time. Yeah. Yeah. That's just it. I mean, it's one thing to know techniques. Yeah. Okay. Everything involved in painting is a technique. It's another thing to get caught up in rules because it's the rules that will limit you. The techniques will give you the means to create. The rules will limit what you could potentially create is really how it works out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do, oh, well, okay. The, this, this one I actually haven't asked you before. Do, do you have like a preferred like brush, like, like a brand or anything like that? Or is it just kind of <laughs> like, there's a brush, it'll work? Well, no, I will say uh, the Mod Podge, um, paint brushes line. I do like using those oh, really? because they last the longest with me. I am horrible with my brushes. I am so rough and tumble on them. Um, I have tried and please, please do not guide me on this is the way to save your brushes. I know all the tricks, but yo, uh, I just, I beat them up. It's, it's my yeah. nature of how I paint and what I do. Um, but so the Mod Podge ones, it's the ones you see us using on paint and all the time. They are, I literally have my paint brushes in front of me. They're the ones that have the hot pink and the red handles. Oh, it's okay. a really good one. So if you go to our Discord and go to the Paint and Slate channel, it is in one of the pin posts. So you can check out the supplies and you can order this one. <laughs> not sponsored. Not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. No. That's good to know because yeah, I, 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 I'll be honest. I go to uh, uh, the uh, the hobby store like all the time, and I look at brushes, and I'm just like, ah. Uh, sure <laughs> I'm like there's yeah. all these different brands and everything i'm like i have no idea what any of this means i was just like i like tiny stuff i'm gonna get a tiny brush and then i'll do the, the tiny yeah ones. no they work out really well they have served me well and i mean even the detail brushes are pretty darn good so my like i like i said I, I tried to paint that warhammer army back in the day and my, my i do have a friend who who is very artistic like like he draws and he paints and all that stuff uh but he, he's always done it in a weird way and he even found a way to do that in miniature painting he had this chaos night uh, uh like cool general thing and i look over at him one day while he's painting and he's going like this at least really close to him just like you okay like over look he is painting with a toothpick <laughs> and he's yeah. just and I'm like, what? Do, what do you mean you're painting with a toothpick? <laughs> yes. You can totally paint with a toothpick. You can paint with some really cool um, nail art tools. Oh. Yeah. They do some fun things, especially <laughs> when you're trying to do dots and stuff. I love them for that. There's oh, so, so much you can use for mini painting that is not a traditional paintbrush. Oh my god. I, well, what's funny is I, I was just, he was just like, no, it's it's getting let me do all the detail. He painted this mm -hmm. absolutely stunning mini, yeah. um, and I was like, okay, I will try it. And I and I did a whole mini with a, to a toothpick. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, that works. It took longer, but it worked. Yeah, you can you can do like stippling and pointillism type of stuff. So mm -hmm. It works really well. The the, the only non brush no non toothpick thing that I've used, I, I do have like a little pin needle that I have with my paints. Mm -hmm. That way, if I need to do a very tiny eye, I can just get it in yeah, there this little dot yep that works out it's perfect mm. um well let's uh check out what chat has been up to uh while we've okay. been talking um and uh and and remember you can put in chat right now question colon and then your question and martin will grab them and put it put it into the tech stock uh let's start this off with a question uh uh what all does a partner manager do at cne <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, Everything. So I, I am the partner and talent oh, manager oh, at hang on. coding. 
Real quick, I sorry, I, I should have said this. Uh, we're actually going to be starting the giveaway here in a moment, and Martin Ooh. was very sure to make me see this by continually making the text larger and larger, so I could I would notice it. Thank you, Martin. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, keyword is going to be Voronika. Uh, so uh, watch for that to start and uh, put it in chat, and then we will be answering questions that happen. So sorry, forgive me for interrupting. That's okay. Um, so I'm the partner and talent manager, which basically, um, God, what's a good way to put it? I, I interact with our various partners as well as our content creators. It's, it's scheduling, it's projects, it's it's productions behind the scenes. It's it's a lot of stuff going on. I I don't know. I kind of feel like the mom of the company. <laughs> 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 uh, it's I mean, like, did you have your meeting today? Did you follow up? Hey, kids, did you make sure did this day before? S setting up all know. the Idle Insights review has has felt like that a few times. <laughs> But I'm so freaking thankful. <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot of um coordinating and helping people get to where they need to be for their various projects and um communicating between various people. It's a lot of it's a lot of talking and back and forth. Mm -hmm. You 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 also like one of the things that I, I absolutely admire about you and your role is that like a question will come up with about something and you're just like I have a contact for that. And it's yeah. like almost every single time there's like been very few times where it's like, oh, I'll just I'll reach out to him. And I don't know anybody that does that. Mm -hmm. But it's it's always impressed me how many times it's just like, nope, I know someone there. I know someone there. I know someone there. I know someone there. It's so great. <laughs> yeah, I honestly am blessed to know a fantastic circle of people um, in various places. Uh, it's just because I find meeting and interacting and getting to know people fascinating and wonderful and I always love playing connect the dots however possible for people. So if it's like, I meet one person who's talking about doing this, I'm like, you know, it'd be really great if you met this person. Mm -hmm. I love being able to do things like that. So it, it translates well into what I do every day for my job as it is. So. Martin put a comment that said, V is the, I know a guy person. <laughs> I, know a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy. You're good. I know a guy. <laughs> I know, I know a guy. <laughs> uh lurking writer says question how did the crafting muse begin uh what was it about painting minis and other associated crafts that caught your interest uh the crafting muse began because i was in a facebook group where everyone was talking about painting terrain and various things and i shared something and someone asked me how did you do that and, and i used to be a teacher so for me when someone says how do you do that that becomes uh, it's, it's almost like the bat signal um, <laughs> <laughs> can i just show you uh so i created this really janky video it is actually on my youtube channel if you want to see it's the oh, diamond really? tile pattern oh yeah oh yeah talk about keep the first things you ever did up and available as a reminder um so i did that video and then people were like well what about this and it's sort of snowballed on itself in terms of the more people wanted to know, the more I was, you know, sharing what I knew about building and crafting and everything like that. Because again, I was using a glue gun at the age of five. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not even kidding an eighties child. Uh, <laughs> so really the crafting news started because I was enjoying the process of creating tabletop terrain and paraphernalia and miniatures. And people wanted to know how I was doing what I was doing. And I wanted to share that information with them is really the nutshell of it i love that that's fantastic yeah. I, I love the aspect of just like i just i just like uh helping people and i like teaching how to do stuff that's really great uh let's see this is uh oh i my words are not making sense to me so i apologize uh winter born on two i'm gonna say that's how you say it question uh how happy are you with how voronika turned out for idol champions and have you prepared an apology for the other seat one champions for becoming the best choice <laughs> nope. um i honestly like it has meant so much to me that everyone who has played a part in creating voronika for idol champions you could tell they get her on some sort of level, whether it was the art department getting her dualities and the darkness and everything like that, how she was in ghost form, how she's in dark lord form, to how the design team created how she functions in the game and everything like that. I am truly thrilled that so much of what she does in the game, there are connections to her story mm -hmm. in Black Dice Society. Like it has been wonderful and amazing. And I'm so thrilled about that one. Well, yeah, I, I love that you you even uh, revealed something we didn't know through the the item art. Like that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that'd be a fun little Easter egg for everyone to find out for Black Dice fans. Um, so yeah, that's it's that's been a wonderful experience, and the team is fantastic. And um, you know, it's a joy seeing her and watching 
everything pan out with her in the game. I'm like, yeah, it's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. This is from uh, EMT Man. Question: uh, What's scarier, pitching to Chris Perkins or playing at B Dave's table? <laughs> Neither. They're both I, wonderful people. <laughs> see, that's the thing. I knew that was going to be your answer. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone has been fantastic through the whole thing. I think, honestly, the more, the most terrifying thing was the reveal night. Was oh, hoping I it got... worked out as planned. That was honestly my most like moment for Black Dice ever. Uh, was and it was spectacular. It was, it, I was calling from a freaking hotel room in Canada and everything like that. So I'm like, oh my god, please, just internet, don't drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Star Chaser 43 says question, what is your favorite moment in Black Dice Society? Oh. That's a really hard one. <laughs> that's what we're here for, the hard hitting questions. Mm. <laughs> mm, okay, I got to think about this one. Um I like the quieter moments where you get this touch of when the Kashmarians are able to sit and talk about mm. you know Kashmar before and you can see they really were friends it's those moments that i like the most um the humanity behind all of them yeah i yeah. It, i i know what you mean the, those are those are really good here I, yeah. I love getting to hear y'all talk about like stuff that we didn't see in the show mm -hmm. like like yeah. from before i it, it, yeah. it's such great world building i love it yeah, so uh this one is from uh Jed Sitto, I'm going to say that one. Uh, question, okay. did the six vows they made in the wedding somehow allow that permanence and change? Do you, do you remember this from the, the very first one? Be yeah, those were intentional. Those were intentional. Those were built into the whole concept of knowing what was going to happen to Kashmar. So yeah, it was, a, it was definitely setting up the stage oh, for God, what was going to happen so later on down the line. Yeah. That's so good. That scene, yeah. that scene and, uh, blew that me was... away because I, I like granted, I don't I don't watch too many actual plays and everything like that, but I'd never seen like mm -hmm. a wedding done in a game before. And it was yeah. so well done. Yeah, so that great. was B Dave. B Dave, B Dave was the, uh, the he definitely officiated that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only got officiated to do a wedding once and it never happened, but it was also supposed to be uh, mm -hmm. on Halo 2. So I'm kind of glad it didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the lurking writer says slight spoilers for idol champions presents court of the raven queen but question voronika mm. briefly showed up during those events and interacted with tatiana and desmond she also mm -hmm. met orkira uh we've asked lauren what orkira thought but uh what was nika's opinion of our lovely favorite dragonborn is another curious little creature i might have use for her later we'll see <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Also, lurking right, I, I very much appreciate all of the all of the context there. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is from uh, Alfcar zero one one. Question, uh, unless answered before. Uh, when uh, this is just says, uh, when did you first meet and where? Um, maybe that's for you and B Dave. Oh, and random cat. Hello, cat. <laughs> it's a Rory. It's yeah, a Rory. Rory. That's a Rory. Um, a wild Rory is spotted. <laughs> so do you remember when you first met B-Dave? The funny thing is we haven't met face to face physically. Oh, oh really? <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Um, so we had actually started following each other on Twitter and had back and forth. And I went to message a friend of mine and oops a daisy messaged him instead <laughs> it's always a great way to start talking to someone <laughs> totally because i went in i went into that conversation thinking i was talking to a very close uh girlfriend of mine and it was just like yo <laughs> and god bless him he went along with it <laughs> i i think that is such a great way to meet me yeah. dave because yeah, yeah he's it was uh, a miss miss dm on my part that's so good. That's so yeah. good. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. We kept in touch since, obviously. <laughs> uh, Jay McUnyielding says, question, uh, you've told us a bit about the process of creating a Dark Lord, but what was some of your favorite parts uh, or things to incorporate and what was uh, particularly difficult? Um, in terms of creating the Dark Lord? I think may maybe also just like the character in general. 
Um, probably the hardest thing or the thing I was trying to be most cognizant of is making sure she didn't become a cliche. Um, mm. I didn't want her to become the femme fatale. I didn't want her to be like the, oh, woe is me. I am the damsel in distressed um, type of thing. So I, I very much wanted to steer her away from the predictable, like, oh, well, she's just, you know, they need her to save her from Morton. She's just a helpless little ghost. It's like, oh, heck no. Because if you give her a chance to do something, she will do something to you. Um, that has probably been the most challenging part is not to have her fall into um, preconceptions, but actually make her complex, make her multi-layered, make her something that people want to get to know more about and keep discovering things about her, even though they may have made, oh, well, she's like this and then find out, oh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, that has probably been the most challenging thing with creating Nika, Voronika, Dark Lord, Ghosty, Druid Lady. <laughs> I, I have to say you nailed it because yeah, I never once got that sort of an impression from her. I mean, like mm -hmm. at, at one point, Nika was a sword and, w and was still very much her own character and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, okay, let's see. This is MC1740 question. Um, uh, what, what is this? Uh, if I want to come in contact to ask if uh, there is a chance to do some collaboration. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, um, <laughs> what is I, time? <laughs> yeah, I will say this. V is extremely busy. I... I extremely extremely busy yeah that's that's just it my my calendar i'm not even kidding like i've had to say no for months and months and months out so i always appreciate people wanting to collaborate but please understand when i'm saying no i have to say no mm -hmm. it's not for any other reason the fact of um you know not spreading myself too thin and knowing where my limits are and i've hit limits <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have as well <laughs> <laughs> um lauren did uh to answer this in the chat and i i i thought it was a, a fun one but this is from uh vin mist uh question uh can we as players led by ovo lauren uh request a petition to move or uh or here so that we can have Vora, nika and everyone in the same formation uh and while, while that is awesome uh yeah i don't think that is uh uh, uh possible to happen to, uh I, as lauren said in the chat it's a little bit of a nightmare to move a move a champion <laughs> um let's see we got one more here this is from cyf2 question is voronika at all envious of the fact that dahani gets to do uh some painting and idol champions but she doesn't no no because voronika is not me <laughs> <laughs> totally fair i've created the character but voronika is not me <laughs> 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 uh well v thank you so much for sitting down talking with me today this has been an absolute blast i always love getting to talk with you so it, it was fun to do this as a show <laughs> yeah this is you know people get to witness what we do yes this is pretty much what a meeting with us looks like uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but if uh people wanted to find you and your work on the interwebs where could they do so best place to find me is on the tweeters uh because that is where i'm most active so that is at v underscore muse and uh find me there and i will you know be chatting and tweeting and doing all the things over there you can also find me here every friday for paint and slide with lauren make sure you come back tomorrow because we're going to be finishing up the uh, oh lucky right here finishing up the <laughs> chant, yeah. uh having some fun with that one uh, i am also over on instagram especially if those of you are interested in like seeing some of my minis instagram is a great place to go check out because i tend to do more mini posts over there um and then uh facebook i do have a page over on facebook but that's Facebook, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just start start at Twitter, and we'll go from there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey. Uh, well, once again, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I, I, I'm absolutely loving Vornika in the game, and I hope everyone out there is as well. You can get her in your formation right now uh, during Agron's Day, and there's Rory give, give it a nice little cat stretch at the end. So, you know, that, that that's they the true sign off. Look at the kitty. Yeah. Now, it. true story, Hemlock is based off of one of my cats, not <laughs> this one. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And Hemlock is also available in the in-game store, so check that out. Uh, but that is going to do it for this week's episode of Idle Insights. So until next week, take care of yourself.